it seems to many people that we're not taking it seriously enough. When we hear legislators, lawmakers in states like Florida say we're not going to acknowledge climate change, it seems crazy to me. Yeah. You know, um, as, a, as a medical doctor, right, you know, you look at the unanimity of opinion among scientists about man-made climate change, there's almost nothing in medicine that has that kind of unanimity of opinion. So the scientific debate is effectively over. Well, a very interesting exchange on Bloomberg TV. World Bank President Jim Young Kim and anchor Stephanie Rule discussing the current state of the climate change debate. Yeah, the World Bank President goes on to say that our situation is effectively getting worse and that the debate on man-made climate change has been settled. Now it's time to do something about it. But has it been settled completely and in the way so many folks talk about in terms of global warming? That's why we're so pleased to have our next guest here on our anchor desk today, John Casey, who is the president of Space and Science Research Corporation and author of the book you see right here, Dark Winter, How the Sun is Causing a 30-Year Cold Spell. And again, John, for some of us who are just not quite scientifically inclined, how is the sun doing this, casting this cold spell? Well, this is actually a pretty straightforward scientific proposition. The sun goes through natural cycles, and currently a 206-year cycle of the sun has ended global warming and has begun to institute a new cold climate period by cutting back on that energy by which it warms the planet. So you're saying we're going through not global warming, but global cooling. Absolutely global cooling, and by some measurements, an extreme cold era of global cooling. Now, Berkeley's physics professor Richard Mueller has a different opinion than you. He gave this interview on research last December. Take a listen. We also added in solar variability. We tried this in many different ways. Tried just the straight sunspot record, running averages of the sunspot record, the IPCC uh, function of solar intensity. We tried all of them. They didn't contribute. The, the fact that, that solar variability was not responsible. We enable us to rule out the primary alternative theory. So there you have it. You just heard Richard say that solar activity doesn't affect atmospheric temperatures. How do you argue with that? Well, in fact, the UN dismissed the role of the sun in climate change uh, decades ago by using the same kind of illogic. The illogic is if you use only one parameter for the sun, the TSI, or total solar irradiance, and you use that measurement, we find out that the TSI does in fact vary uh, only a very small percentage of 1%. However, what we now know after decades of research is that the Earth not only lives in a Goldilocks zone around the sun, but lives on a knife's edge within that Goldilocks zone. So even that very small fraction of 1% of energy output from the sun makes the complete difference between a global warm period and a new little ice age. And we were seeing just the size of the sun in comparison to Earth, and I like that phraseology, the Goldilocks zone, not too hot, not too cold, just, just right. We, we've heard the debate from a lot of the climate change, I'll call them enthusiasts, saying you got to limit global, you got to limit carbon emissions, that's the key. Where do you stand on carbon emissions? Does that have any effect? Mankind's CO2 contribution does add to global warming, or it used to when we had global warming. It, however, is such a very, very small component, it's almost insignificant. In fact, in our global climate status report that our scientists put together every six months, we measure 24 major climate parameters. CO2 is not even one of them. Hmm. So well, a lot to talk about here. So you're saying we're using different tools. We are, right, and, and because we use different tools, we have now accrued and independently verified the best climate prediction record of any climate research firm in the U.S. Well, obviously, there is more to talk about in terms of what uh, the future portends in terms of our climate, and we will do so as we continue our conversation with John Casey. Uh, the conversation will heat up even as the Earth cools off. And America's Forum continues here from Newsmax TV. I think we're going to have strong indications of life beyond Earth within a decade. 
Um, and, and I think we're going to have definitive evidence within 10, 20 to 30 years. We, we know where to look. We know how to look. In most cases, we have the technology. Um, and we're on a path to implementing it. Within all of our lifetime, though, we're going to understand that there is life on other bodies in the solar system. Well, that is NASA's chief scientist, Ellen Stofan, making a bold statement, almost not to joke, but like the prelude to Star Trek. Boldly go where no one has gone I before. In, in, in intelligent life elsewhere, or certainly life. Uh, it's why it we've got our good friend, that's right, we <laughs> hey, offer we the Vulcan to salute to our, to our good friend, John Casey, who is the president of the uh, Space and Science Research Corporation, of course, the author of the book, Dark Winter. You heard NASA's chief scientist talk about life elsewhere. Your, your take on that. Well, I certainly hope she's correct. Uh, unfortunately, NASA's budget and the leadership out of the White House doesn't seem to be heading in the direction she's heading. We have tremendous capability within NASA simply not being used. We have tremendous opportunity for the human race to do greater exploration and to find solid evidence of life, even if it's only microscopic life, which I think she's talking about, in other worlds. But uh, I would certainly see uh, that happening only if we get a strong president who wants to really push the space program and realize what NASA's great goals can be. Well, I'm going to go back to the topic we were talking about earlier about climate change. The president has been very vocal about that. And one of the things that I want to bring up is you worked for NASA at one time. And I want to pull up, if we could, NASA's website. Can we do that? Maybe? Okay. Maybe not. NASA's website actually talks about that the total ice is down, forest cover is down, sea level is up, temperatures are rising, <clears throat> basically disputing everything that you've been saying. Well, in fact... And our, there you have it, right there. Okay. Our group uses five major global temperature data sets. We don't just use the NASA data set or the NOAA data set. And we analyze the most comprehensive data available on the planet to determine climate trends, whether cooling, warming, or neutral. As a result of our comprehensive integrated analysis of global climate, we have in fact come up with different conclusions based on a single data set from a single government agency. So is NASA wrong? NASA is not complete, to say the least. And unfortunately, the president has made some statements that are not really accurate in terms of what's really happening with the climate. For example, 2014, the president said in the State of the Union message that it was the warmest year on record. That was certainly not the case. Even in NASA's case, when they uh, helped back up his claim, they said they were only 38% sure that it was. Well, that means they were 62% sure it wasn't the warmest. <laughs> That's simple math. Uh, let's take a minute, because that's about all we really have left. Uh, your book, now a Newsmax TV documentary. Uh, tonight, I guess, is going to be on. Tell us about it. Uh, 8 p.m. tonight is the first airing. It's uh, covered on DirecTV, Dish Network, NewsmaxTV.com, Verizon, Fios, Channel 115. I am deeply honored with what Newsmax and Chris Ruddy have done to get the truth out about climate. And that's really what my book, Dark Winter, is all about. It doesn't get into the heated debates, pro and con, of no CO2's impact. There. Right, thank yeah. you. <laughs> but what it does do is tell what our group, the community of solar climate uh, climatologists, believe, that the sun is going through a new cold phase, cutting back on the energy by which it has warmed the Earth for 200 years. And that's going to bring us a deep, potentially dangerous cold era. And that's what we discuss in my book, Dark Winter. Thus the name of the book, Dark Winter, the same name of the, um, of the documentary. Again, remember, you can see that documentary tonight right here on Newsmax TV, airing at 8 o'clock Eastern. And we'll see it uh, throughout the weekend here on Newsmax TV. Again, if you, if you want to get the book, Dark Winter, that's where you go to get it, Newsmax.com slash dark winter one word there for internet purposes john it is so good to have you here with us thank you a real yeah. pleasure we very much appreciate the time and we appreciate your time too uh, be sure to watch dark watch dark winter tonight at eight and come back here tomorrow morning nine in the east uh, actually there's more ahead i was